Salwete Oudentes. My name is Draco, and this is Antiqua Culina, the show where I recreate ancient recipes and discuss their ingredients and history. As usual, sources are in the description. But first, Elibatum to Vesta. After tackling a series of meat and vegetable dishes in the Epicius, I want to attempt one of the more complicated dessert dishes within Book 7, which includes recipes for custards, quiche-like tarts, and surprisingly, a recipe by the modern name French Toast. No, we will not be making that, but instead another sweet dish, or Aliter Dulcia, one of the many recipes in Book 7 by that name itself, specifically Aliter Dulcia number 5 in the Dulcia Domestica et Melkai section. Here is the recipe as appears in the Deire Cochranaria, with translation provided. As usual, I compare my translation to the veiling translation for the Penelope U Chicago website. The pepper and roux will definitely add a distinct flavor to the dish, and while I would like to use more interesting spices, such as cloves and nutmeg, that simply will not do. For anyone wondering, roux is a bittersweet herb that is rather hard to get this side of the Atlantic, so I will be making some substitutions. For this custard dish, you will need one and a half to two cups of milk, two eggs, half a teaspoon of black peppercorns, one third cup nuts, I use almonds, one half cup honey, some parsley sprigs, one tablespoon raisin wine, and one tablespoon flour. To begin, mix your wine, flour, and honey together in a pot and bring to boil. While this is happening, toast your nuts and peppercorns until they become aromatic, then set aside after grinding them up. Once the mixture heats up, whisk in the milk and bring that to just before a boil. While this is happening, whisk together your eggs. Temper the milk mixture with the eggs by pouring in one ladle of the milk. Whisk vigorously to prevent the eggs from scrambling. Repeat again, then add your heated egg mixture back into the main cooking vessel. Whisk thoroughly until fully cooked. Optionally, before you serve, sift the mix mixture to remove the nuts. To finish, chop your parsley finely, then add it to the custard at the very end. Serve garnished with the parsley, some more honey, and crushed nuts. As you probably expect, eggs possess great spiritual and cultural significance in the ancient world, oftentimes as an extremely unsubtle symbol of new life, fertility, and good fortune. To some extent, eggs could be considered meat-adjacent and acceptable as offerings to the deceased, but they were also popular for marriages, their offerings a magical fetish intending to breed fertility to the couple. Likewise, eggs' animal origin prohibited certain cults from eating them, mainly the Orphics, while other cults, such as Isis cult in Rome, required abstinence from eggs as among the preparatory purification for initiates. Eggs also featured in some of her festivals and rituals. To ancient peoples, especially the Romans, an intense magical relation existed between one's consumption and one's nature. Pliny mentions a peasant superstition that ravens lay eggs through their mouth, so therefore if a pregnant woman eats raven eggs, she will deliver by the mouth as well, and that it and that even if raven eggs are merely carried into a home, labor complications will ensue. Later in Book 29, Pliny recounts several medicinal remedies involving eggs, including mixed with oil to cure skin infections and with burned shells and wine to cure dysentery. Regardless of any underlying medical veracity to these claims, Pliny's numerous health recommendations, as well as the natural history's focus in the later books on medicinal remedies, depict the Romans as an incredibly risk-adverse society, obsessed with health and illness, most likely due to the prevalence of death, illness, and lasting medical issues in the population. Modern medicine is truly a wonderful thing. Time for a taste. So this recipe was the version that had the nuts and pepper in it, rather than steeping them in the custard then sifting them out. The latter version is the one I recommend. This mixture is a bit too peppery for my taste. And the parsley is tasty, but not exactly in this dish. I would rate this a 7 out of 10, and I would make this again, but with half and half instead, and with the nuts and pepper strained out. In conclusion, this recipe is 7 out of 10, make it again, but with certain stipulations, and to the Cone Fellowship who provides me with the funds to make these videos, many thanks.